I say good morning, Calvary. It's good to be here. It's good to be here in church with you this morning. A special welcome to our visitors who are worshiping with us. I greet you in the awesome name of Jesus. He is the same now and forever. God is good. All the time. I uh, want to testify to that effect, especially um, my wife and I experienced the goodness of God this past week. Um, we were involved in an accident up in Pennsylvania. Um, I was supposed to go to the same place that Frank, Frank was, and uh, we were traveling from Ontario, Canada, down through central Pennsylvania, maybe an hour and a half from where we were going, and uh, got rear-ended by a, a pickup truck at a, at a red light. And uh, praise the Lord, we, our vehicle really got damaged, but we didn't. We have minor injuries, and, and God is really good. Along with that, I'd like to highlight another characteristic of God is incomprehensibility. We don't understand God's working. God is good, and he is also, his ways are incomprehensible sometimes. We don't understand why that accident happened. We have no idea. Um, but God is there, and God is uh, working, and we are so grateful. The title for this today's message is Members of His Body, speaking of Christ. Our study text is 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12 to 27. It's a fairly large passage, and we'll be reading that here in a few moments. D.L. Moody, that great Bible teacher, was visiting a prominent citizen of Chicago, and uh, he was discussing the church with this, this man, and the man said, I believe I can be just as good a Christian outside the church as I can be inside it. I can be just as good a Christian outside of the church as I can be a part of it. Uh, D.L. Moody, wise man that he was, didn't say a word. He went over to the fireplace, which was burning brightly. It was a cold day. He went over there, grabbed the tongs, and took one of the embers out of the fireplace and laid it on the hearth. And they both sat there and just watched that ember as it slowly died. The man looked at D.L. Moody and he said, I understand, I see it. It is not good to be pulled out of the fire and try to burn on your own. It's good to be a part of the family of God. It's good to be a part of an active part of a local church. In our passage this morning, the apostle is using the metaphor of a body. And we all understand bodies. We all live in bodies. So we understand that metaphor. That word picture is, is very, very uh, powerful in the teaching. And he says that, the, that we are the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. And we hear that term a lot, and maybe we've kind of grow, grown too accustomed to it. But understand that Christ has a body. Christ is the head, and his church is the body. And we are relating to Christ as our head and to each other, as the body members do in your body. And that is a powerful word picture. And we want to be using that a lot this morning. And Paul was still trying to teach the Corinthian church that it is so harmful to have divisions in the church. It's so, it's so traumatic, these divisions in the church and these little schisms that we're developing in the church, these little divisions. And he says, you're all part of a body. You know, act like a body would, would act. Um, it takes many parts to make up a body. And this morning as I speak on the body of Christ, I want you to be thinking about maybe, uh, maybe what you are in the body of Christ. And I know you can't judge that, but maybe you're a big toe, maybe you're a liver, okay? You are all vital to the body of Christ. And it's very important that you be connected to that body. 
Let's read our text. If you would stand, please. 1 Corinthians 12, verses 12 to 27, as I read the, the text. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12 and following. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all are all made to drink of one spirit. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And on those parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow the greater honor, and our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty, which our more presentable parts do not require. But God has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it, that there be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. You may be seated. <clears throat> I met an African man on a plane trip. This was a, a good while back. I was traveling down uh, for my work uh, down to Myrtle Beach. And I was flying on this airplane and I sat beside this very distinguished looking uh, black man uh, on the airplane. And uh, being uh, what I am, a Christian, I got convicted I should talk to the man about the Lord. And uh, so, so I ask him uh, just politely, are, are you a Christian or do you believe? Or, uh, where are you with the Lord? And he said, I'm a Christian. I, I believe. And, you know, when I talked to the man, even though he probably wasn't as fluent in English, I, I think he might have been from Nigeria or one of those countries. And uh, I got the sense that this man was a real believer. This man was a believer. I just got that sense. You know how you are with someone and your spirit just identifies with them. And I realized that he is part of the body of Christ. He is the part of the body of Christ. He is part of the worldwide body of Christ. The all-encompassing group of Christians throughout the world who call themselves by many different names. In this body, Calvary Mennonite Fellowship, the local body, there is also that body of Christ. And it, it is uh, actually more, Paul, when he is talking to the body of Christ or likening the Corinthians to the body of Christ, I believe he is dressing more particularly the local body of Christ. Yeah, that we are all a worldwide body of Christ, but where the rubber really meets the road, where the body parts really interact, is in the local body. In this body, Calvary Mennonite Fellowship, we interact as a body, and we should. I don't have the same level of accountability with the brother from North Africa as I do with you. I don't have the same interaction that way.
Each member is indispensable. The passage that we just read from 1 Corinthians 12 tells us that each member of the body is indispensable. You don't want to miss any of them. Each one of us are, you can't just throw it away and say it's, we don't need you. Each one of you is a part of this body. We need you, every one of you. You may only be some little part that you think you're, you're just not worth that much. We need you. The body needs each member. Each part must be there for the body to be complete. If, you're, if part, one of your body parts are, are missing, you miss that, okay? As a youngster, I, I cut off a part of my finger in a tractor accident. And I still occasionally miss that thing, especially when I'm typing on the keyboard. I can't quite reach certain parts. And I never really learned to play a musical instrument, maybe partly because of that. Probably not really, but anyway. We miss the pieces that are, that are not there. Each part is dispensable. God has made us all different and unique, and he gifts us in particular ways like no one else. We are special, and we are necessary. I want you to know that here at Calvary. You are indispensable. We want you to be a part of this body. You are uh, maybe just a blood vessel somewhere, but you are very, very vital to this church. Second main point I want to make, each member is interdependent. Each member of the body of Christ is interdependent. We depend on each other. We are tied together in unique ways in the body of Christ. Just like our physical body is tied together in, in unique ways, we are tied together. We are dependent on each other. The apostle in the passage that we just read kept saying that again and again. We are in, in interdependent of each other's. The various parts of our human bodies contribute to the whole in unique and significant ways. And we are to carry out the function for which we were created and gifted by God, whether it is for seeing, for hearing, for smelling, for touching, or whatever. Not all of us will play leading roles in the body. Some are up front. Some of you are not up front. You are just as much a part of the body and you're just as important in the body. That body is, needs to be able to function and we all have a place in the body of Christ. Third main point, each member is interconnected. We are all indispensable. We are all interdependent. And we are all interconnected. Each of us rely on the other. Take, for example, this thing that I'm doing right now up front here, speaking. Speech is possible only when my brain, such as it is, nerves, tongues, tongue, jaws, lips, Larynx, lungs, diaphragm, heart, veins, arteries, capillaries, and parts unknown to me all work together for a specific purpose. So behind in, in, the, in the body of Christ, we are so interconnected and so dependent on each other. We are all part of that body. And we miss you if you're not here and if you're not part plugged in to that body. We miss you. In a certain mountain village, the story goes, in Europe several centuries ago, a nobleman wondered what legacy he should leave to the townspeople. At last, he decided to build them a church. No one saw the complete plans for the church until it was finished. When the people gathered, they marveled at its beauty and completeness. Then someone asked, but where are the lamps? How will they be lighted? The nobleman pointed to some brackets in the walls. Then he gave each family a lamp that they were to bring with them each time they came to worship. Each time you are here, the area where you are seated will be lighted. 
The nobleman said, each time you are not here, that area will be dark. This is to remind you that whenever you fail to come to church, some part of God's house will be dark. Isn't that a beautiful picture? We are all interconnected. We're interdependent. And we're all indispensable as parts of that body. And you may say, nobody misses me. <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, we do. You're all part of the body of Christ. Suppose you're at home running around barefoot and you carelessly bump your little pinky toe into the side of a chair, okay? And you say, well, you know, that's just, <laughs> that's just that toe. I, I'm not hooked to him. Guess what? You are. You find that out very quickly that you are hooked there to that little toe. Every part of the body will join in the pain. The leg and foot that is not injured will begin to jump up and down. <laughs> Your back will bend over to enable your arm and hand to extend a soothing massage. All the members necessary for speech will join in an altar of groans that words cannot express. No part of your body will go untouched by the injury to your pinky toe. All will be affected. All will come to its aid. That is the way a body should work. Sometimes we break down as a local body. And somebody's hurting, and we don't reach out to them. That is a body that is not functioning the way that it should. I have been blessed since I've been here at Calvary with the way that we reach out to each other when someone is hurting, when someone is, is, is not doing well, how we reach out. And, and that, is, that is the way it should be. We are interconnected. We are interdependent, and we are indispensable. Those are all parts of the body of Christ. And that's what Paul was preaching to the Corinthian, to writing to the Corinthian church was, was this indispensability that each one of us has, the interdependence that we have for each other and that way that we are interconnected. Harmful body attitudes. There are two basic attitudes in the body that are very, very harmful to the functioning of the body of Christ. And I want to treat those two in turn. The first one is an inferiority complex. They don't need me. I won't ask for a show of hands. For those of you who have felt that in the church, they don't need me. No, nobody will even notice if I'm not there. They don't need me. In our, in our text, verse 14, for the body does not consist of one member, but of many, if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. You say they don't need me. Is that true? That's not true. They need you. They need all of us. This body needs all of us. Those feelings are not accurate. That's not valid reasoning that I'm doing with myself. Just because my contribution is different or maybe not as visible as some others, they, the church needs every part of the body the body is, significant, is a significant reality only when there are many parts. One member does not make a body. The body needs diversification. The body needs many members. Contentment with God's placement in the body makes me significant in his plan. Let me repeat that statement. Contentment with God's placement makes me significant in his plan. When I'm content with where God has put me in the local body, that makes me a vital part of his plan for Calvary Mennonite Fellowship. God has put me in a certain place and I'm filling a role 
And if I'm content in that and I say, okay, great. I am filling God's plan. That makes me a vital part, a significant part. Your big toe is important. I don't know how many of you know, but if you lose your big toe, you have a very big balance problem. I fortunately have not lost my big toe. But if you, they, they'll, they'll tell you that you struggle with balance. And you say, well, it's just a toe. It's inside of your sock. And we all have them, right? Now, don't take off your, your shoes. Wait later, okay? You all have a big toe. And that toe is there filling that role. And it's, uh, the, it's needed. We didn't choose our gifting. God does. To resent what God made you is to distrust God. If I say I don't count, you're saying that God blew it. To say that I don't have anything to contribute is to say that God doesn't know how to build the church. God is building this church, and he knows what he needs. And you are part of that. You are part of that. So an in inferiority complex. I know some of you, and I won't, again, ask for a raise of hand. We, you struggle with that. You feel insignificant. But it's not true in the body of Christ. You are a significant part of this local body. The, the opposite is also a harmful bad body attitude. Feelings of superiority. I don't need them. I don't need them. I can do it on my own. I don't need them. Verse 21 of our text says, The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. That's an arrogant attitude. It's an unrealistic view of myself. You say, I don't have the problems that my brother or sister does. My, prob my issues are minor compared to them. That's pride. And that is not part of God's plan. There's individualism that has so entered the American church. This whole thing of individualism. I don't need other people around me. I don't need the church at Calvary. I can stay at home and I can have my own little church right in my living room. Okay, I don't need to relate to the local body. A quote from Henry D. Lubach. He says, Our personal destiny can only work itself out in the common salvation of the church. I want to repeat that. It's a very, very profound statement. Our personal destiny can only work itself out in the common salvation of the church. We're all in the same boat. And our personal destiny is closely tied to the rest of the body. Your personal destiny here at Calvary Manor Fellowship is closely died, tied to this church. And where God wants you is in this church. And where God wants you at this point in time is part of this local body. And he wants you to tie in with the local body. And your personal destiny is tied in with how this church does. How the ministry of this local church. It's very important. I hope we can get that vision. I, growing up in the uh, 70s, I would have been a teenager, used to listen to music that maybe I shouldn't have, but this was supposedly Christian music. And the, the hippies of that time, or the flower children or whatever, they had this song. They said, me and Jesus, we got our own thing going. Me and Jesus, we got it all worked out. Me and Jesus, we got our own thing going. We don't need anybody to tell us what it's all about. That's not what God intends. Me and Jesus is right, but it's me and Jesus and the rest of the body that influences our lives. There's a real lack of care and concern when I say I don't need them. 
There is a real individualism that goes out there. That's wrong. I want to do a little exercise here this morning, and I hope you don't feel uncomfortable doing this. But I want you to turn around in your seat and tell somebody that's not in your immediate family, perhaps, I need you. At least one person, maybe two. Turn around and say, I need you. You do. We do need each other. Every part, every part of the body is needed. And I need you. And hopefully you need me. We're all interrelated. And I, I think that is a healthy body when we express that to each other, that attitude that we have with each other, that I need you. I need you. I think that makes a healthy body. There's none of us that doesn't need others in the body. We all need what, what others can bring to us. Okay, I want to switch gears just a little bit. And you're going to hear me make a case this morning for local body membership. And some of you may not think that this is a popular subject or this is something you really like. But I am, I am going to make the case because I believe the apostle makes the case. I believe the scriptures make a case for local church membership. Not only attending, not only uh, occasionally coming, but to uh, commit ourselves in a real way to the local body. I am going to make that case that commitment to the local body involves signing on the battle line, if you will, and committing ourselves to the local body. People today change churches about as easily as they do their grocery stores or their banks. I remember a while back, I just didn't appreciate my bank. I just didn't think they were doing, treating me right, so I switched banks. And people do that with churches. They, they are very easy to move around and, and so on. And, and, and their commitment level is very, very low. Um, and the attitude in Christendom today is, I really don't need to be a part, a member of the local body. I'm just fine. Thank you. I will relate to the greater body. Maybe I'll watch a preacher online. Maybe I'll just kind of tend around as I wish. Um, and, and I think that's not God's ideal. Can you live like that? Of course you can. But you're missing the blessings of a local body. You're missing the blessings that come from commitment to the local body. So I want to make some, some points here that tell me that, I, that you should be a part of the local body. Number one, the scriptures take it for granted that all Christians will be part of the membership of a local body. As you read the epistles, um, you'll see they're written to a local body, the, the church at Corinth. They're written to the church at Ephesus. They're written to a local body. And the scriptures seem to be taking for granted that those who are reading this are actually a part of that local body. They're not just sitting at home here in, in part of the worldwide church of God. They're, they're a part of, of a local body. And if Paul were writing, he might write to Calvary Mennonite Fellowship as well. The second point is to support local church membership is the command is to build up the church by the exercise of your gifts. 
The command is to build up the church by the exercise of your gifts. Uh, skipping ahead to 1 Corinthians 14, we're going to be talking about gifts here in the next three or four messages that I have to share. Um, he says in 1 Corinthians 14, 12, So with yourself, since you are eager for manifestations of the Spirit, strive to excel in building up the church. Your, your gift that you were given is for the building up of the local church. How are you going to use your gift in the universal church? Probably not going to. Your gift is probably going to be used in a local church. Number three, the pictures of the church given in the New Testament only make sense in a local church settings. The, wor the word pictures that are used in the scripture only make sense in a local church. For instance, the flock. One sheep living out there by itself doesn't make a flock. We don't flock in a practical sense with the universal church. We don't hang out with the universal church because the universal church is whew, spread way out. It's hard to flock. He uses the word household of God. Household, that speaks of something local. How do I relate to others of my household in a universal church? You really can't. Not well. He speaks of a building. One brick doesn't make a building. One brick all by itself out there doesn't make a building. And how do you brick how, with, uh, with, the, uh, with a worldwide church? How is that brick useful in a worldwide church? It, it has some use, but it's not like a local body. He uses the word body, which we've been using a lot, a building and a body. These are word pictures that the scriptures uses, and to me, they speak of a local body that is working together. Number four, the local church is a special provision made by the Lord Jesus for fellowship, for discipline, for instruction, for service, and the celebration of communion. You can't do those um, in a universal body. You don't fellowship well, number one, with a, with a universal body. Yeah, you can go and, and go online and, and watch the preacher preach, but are you fellowshipping? No, fellowshipping is kind of like a two-way thing, right? It's when you interact. We all went through this with COVID, didn't we? We were sitting at home and watching a live stream. We weren't fellowshipping. We started missing that fellowshipping, didn't we? When we couldn't back and forth with the local body. Um, discipline. The church, part of the church is, is discipline. We disciple each other. Who are we responsible to disciple? We just go find somebody else in the worldwide body of Christ and say, look, brother, you better straighten up. You're not living right. We can't disciple them. And they're like, who are you to me? Okay, who are you to me? I, 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 don't, I relate to God only. I don't relate to you. So discipline happens in the local church. Who am I responsible to as a church leader? To disciple. Who am I responsible for primarily? It's those in this church. Instruction. Service. The local church is, is a provision for service. And you know I am so blessed with this local church in the way that people have been serving. I am just so blessed when I've seen these people, every one of you, most of you at least, stepping up and serving the church in this time of transition when we had to rebuild, basically. And, and, and you've just served in a real visible way in your own gifting. You ha I have seen people that have, you know, made meals. I've seen people going out here knocking bricks off of this wall. I've seen people just doing all the various acts of service that you could do. And that takes place typically in a local 
body. Yeah, you can serve the worldwide body, and some of you would may be called to that in, in areas of service in Africa or wherever. But most of the acts of service actually take place in a local body. And then the celebration of communion. How do you commune with the worldwide church of God? What do you do? Get a thing of juice, put it in your fridge, Go out and get some crackers. The celebration of communion is done as a local body and where we relate together and we commune together. A part of the body of Christ disconnected from the body is pretty much useless. If you take the analogy of the body that the apostle is using here, and you take it to its intended conclusion, a part of that body cut off from the rest of the body is not very useful. It sure isn't. Dr. Erwin Lutzer tells a story, and it's almost hard for me to believe this is an accurate story, but Dr. Erwin Lutzer, I actually trust him pretty well. I enjoy some of his messages. He said, uh, he related the account of a, of a, of a man who uh, went to, to visit his doctor friend, his medical doctor friend, went over to his house. Oh, he invited, the, the doctor invited this friend over for a, for, a, for a visit and a bite to eat. But when he was there, he, uh, the doctor got called away, as doctors do occasionally. There was an emergency somewhere, so the doctor got called away, and he said, oh, I'm so sorry, he told his friend, you know, uh, I'm so sorry to leave you, but, you know, just hang out here and, you know, and help yourself to something out of the fridge, you know. And uh, so the guy was sitting there a while waiting for the doctor to get finished with his emergency. And he started, you know what, I am a little hungry. So he goes over there and opens up the fridge, kind of like <laughs> the men in our household do. My son and I, we kind of spend a lot of time opening the fridge and just, just kind of trying to figure out what's in there, you know, see if there's something we want to graze on or something. And what he saw was really, really interesting. He saw a human hand cut off in a plastic bag. I don't know why the doctor had it there, but it was a human hand cut it off by itself in, in, in a plastic bag. He looked at that a little bit, and it so grossed him out that he whoosh, shut that fridge door, and he realized he wasn't hungry anymore. What was it that grossed him out about that hand? It wasn't connected to anything. There was no blood flowing through it. It wasn't connected. It wasn't that body part is useless. And I'm, I may be taking this to an extreme, but in the body of Christ, if you're off there all by yourself and you're not connected in a real way to the body of Christ, you're not being very useful for God's kingdom. Those of you who are on the sidelines here at Calvary, get off the sidelines. I'm serious. Connect yourself to this local body. I urge you, that is where you belong. That's when, where you will be useful. We dare not, final point on this slide, we dare not allow some small differences to keep us from committing to the local body. Yeah, you've got some beefs with this body. <laughs> Are we perfect? No, we're not. We've got problems. Any church you go to will gonna, is going to have some problems. If they didn't before you got there, they now do. We have got problems. But don't, as a Christian, don't let those little issues that you have keep you from plugging in to the local body. Don't let those little issues that you have keep you from becoming a vital part of that local body. Membership pledges 
This is something I added to my message yesterday. Um, I want to make an announcement here um, for the local body, for the local community. We uh, want to start a membership class here in the very near future. If you are a Christian and you want to become a part of Calvary Mennonite Fellowship, we're going to give you the opportunity. And we want to start a class here in the next couple of weeks. And uh, there are some right here listening to my voice that should be joining that class. You should be joining that class, that membership class. You ought to get off the sidelines and come to that class. And so I just want to open invitation to you. you. Maybe you don't even know for sure that you want to become part of Calvary, but you're interested in it. Um, let, let, one of the, well, let one of the leadership team know. Let me know. Let one of the others of the leadership team know, and we'll sign you up for this class. And the reason I kind of bring it in now, um, one of the things I want to use for this class is a book written by Tom Rayner. Um, it's called I Am a Member. I Am a Church Member. And in this, in this book, he, he gives the pledges that, that, that we should be making as church members. Um, and I want to go over those quickly this morning for the sake of time. I won't spend much time with it. But this is part of what this class will consist of, is, is discussion about uh, of members, uh, the pledges that you would make as a member. The first one is, I will be a functioning church member. I am going to be part of the machinery of that church. I am going to be a functioning church member. I will, I will be part of that member. I'm going to serve others in that church, and I'm going to be taking my role in that church. Number two, I will be a unifying church member. I will be a unifying. The things that come out of me is going to build unity in the church. I am going to give up my own uh, preferences, maybe, and, uh, and, and work toward the unity of the church. I will be a unifying church member. I will not let my church be about my preferences and desires. There are some th small things that you may see at Calvary Mennonite Fellowship that you don't quite like. And if you did it, it wouldn't be done quite like that. That shouldn't stop you from plugging in. It's all about giving up things for each other. It's all about, you know, not critical things, but small things that, that you see that you would do differently. Throw those out the window and be a servant to the church. I will pray for my church leaders. This is what a, a real uh, church member does. Church leaders face things that you can't even imagine. The pressures, the responsibility, and the, the, the things that, that are going on in the church leaders. Pray for them and their families. I will lead my family to be a healthy church member. I drug our kids to church. Some of them had occasional excuses like, you know, I don't want to go today or I'm not whatever. And my wife could tell you, you know, dad said, we're going. Unless you're deathly ill, we're going. And not just Sunday morning services, Sunday evening services, Wednesday night services. I drug them. Singing at nursing homes, I drug them. And I, I think it helped. I think it helped. Try to get your family involved. I will treasure church membership as a gift. You know, church membership is actually a gift. I know before I got into being a minister, my wife and I were thinking about going to uh, Guatemala as missionaries. And we were debating this, you know, should we go... And should we, well, how should we do this? And then God spoke clearly. He said, I want you to be a part of the local church as a minister. And that membership then became my field of service. And church membership is our field of service. It's a gift. It's where you need to be. It's the right thing for you. I can say that with impunity here. You can argue with me. But church membership is a gift. And some of you need to receive that gift and be a part of the local body of Christ. 
I hope I didn't come on too strong, but I feel fairly strong about this thing of church membership. It is where God wants us, plugged in to the local body of Christ and, and along with the body of Christ, glorifying God, reaching the lost, teaching our children, doing all those things that God wants of the body of Christ. That's where God wants us. God bless you. We'll call for a song.